Well, it is the uh, 14th of July. Oh. And July is almost over. It's uh, one hour and 46 minutes into the day. Which means we're halfway through our summer. And you're already seeing back to school popping up. <laughs> it's... it's it's good to have things to do, but at the same time, uh, when you're working and sort of plowing ahead, uh, you don't always notice the time passing. It's sort of like playing uh, a video game, is that uh, once you get into the game, uh, the amount of time actually spent on the game is not noticed. It's something that's realized on the, on, in, in hindsight. It's after you've done whatever you've done, you know, oh, wow, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I started last night at 8 o'clock in the evening. So, you know, it's the same thing because uh, uh, the research that I do is not particularly, um, it's not given to you. It's not standard. You have to go out and find information. You have to go out and uh, look to understand different things. And when you are in a sort of mode where you're moving ahead. And right now in the summer, most of the moving ahead is, uh, well, basically it's, it, it's upgrade work so that you're preparing for September uh, when you get back into the flow of things. A large chunk of the upgrade work has already been done. They always do upgrade work almost every month anyways. But the thing is, a large chunk of the upgrade work is done during the summer. That's your downtime. That's the time to do repairs, to do uh, whatever needs to get done. So that you, in September, you can uh, uh, get back to school, so to speak. And uh, continue along your path. Even though the path is still... So, we're kind of... We haven't stopped, but it just it, it's just we're at, uh, we're at a call a cruising pace or a rolling pace where we're not pushing when the gas is definitely not on the pedal but at the same time we're not stopped either uh, we're just at a point where we don't have to use any energy we're simply moving ahead on our own momentum and getting whatever repair done needs to be done and, and there is was a number of repair work uh, that had to be done during the summer now and uh, majority of the stuff is done I don't know if I'll get everything done but uh, enough has been done so that I can say that progress has been made. Uh, but there's always something to be done. There's always issues to be dealt with. As soon as you finish with one uh, type of repair, there's another repair to pop up that comes into place. Uh, like, like now I've got my second facility up north. I'll be going up again in a couple weeks uh, uh, around August 1st. Uh, Spending about a, what, four or five days up there uh, doing repair work up there. I'm going to try out the new communications network that I have now. Uh, I got rid of the old one that didn't work well up there, so I've got a new one now. Uh, I did a network check, and it says it's fine up there. It's got full uh, 4G plus up there. So the speeds, upload and download should be fine. I've got 30 gigabytes to play with on a monthly basis, so... Uh, I don't really see an issue that's going to sort of pop up, but uh, you never know. <laughs> you, know you don't know how things are going to end up working out. Um, th th there's always a bit of unknown. There's always a bit of uh, uncertainty in anything you do. And nothing gets done perfectly. There's nothing that's ever done perfectly. It's always to some degree of... Uh, of imperfection if you will and even if the success is only a tiny success it's still success and so the, the yaoi vlogs are talking about uh, you know uh, you are worth it well it's not an issue of whether you're worth it or not it's you know I understand their perspective you know they they want to be more positive they want to help other people be more positive but it's not really a matter of whether it's worth it or not it is whether or not uh, something has it, it, again it's about your expectations if you set your expectations to such a point that you have you have to have everything that everybody else has, or your other stuff is no good, then you're never going to be happy because you're never happy with what you have. 
once you're happy with what you have and where you are in terms of your situation, whatever that situation is, then you can start moving forward and, and, and understanding that things don't have to be perfect in order to succeed, that you can have partial successes. You can see the sort of the, the, the positive side of things, even when something comes around that's, that's very negative. Uh, it, but it's hard, again, it's hard to do. These things are hard to move through. The hard to sort of wrap your mind around, and, and when you're not sleeping, and this is my situation, like uh, Carly Reese, uh, uh, from our family nest, that she's not sleeping, and when she doesn't sleep, uh, that's when all the problems begin. So, uh, my problems are such, but I've found ways to sort of deal with uh, what's going on and uh, move forward. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm moving forward with that uh, with uh, the. Uh, the Yaoi vlogs them and the YouTube stroll. So, well, it is four hours and twelve minutes into the fifteenth day of July, and it's time for another really late night vlog. I'm just going to be doing the transition. Uh, I've got some gaming to do, then I'm going to try to get some sleep if I can. Uh, before I have to uh, be out at three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, so. Uh, we'll see what the day brings us. <laughs> I don't, I thought I had something to say, but I don't know what it is right now. It's completely, it's left my mind. I was, did listen to Lionel earlier on. Lionel is definitely going to come in and be part of the puzzle. He's one of the edge pieces, one of the edges of the puzzle that I'm working on. Uh, and this is sort of connects. Uh... Essentially, European history, placing European history in the perspective of global history, and, and, and highlighting where a large chunk of what we call European mythology is. Because a lot of things that you read in the textbook in terms of history aren't really history, it's more of a, of a mythology than anything else, and you want to highlight what is mythology, what isn't, and Lionel LeBron really fits into this because he sits at the trailing end of a sense of European self uh, that was fundamentally self-destructive. And he doesn't seem to understand that it, this is not somebody destroying the Western thought or Western culture. This is Western culture destroying itself. And it is the end point. It was it's actually described quite well in Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky really... So he complains about Marxism, he complains about communism, and people using the wrong terms, and socialism, and so on and so forth. Read Dostoevsky. If you read Dostoevsky, and particularly you want to do Brothers Karamazov, you want to do The Idiot, The Possessed, and then the last one you want to read is Crime and Punishment. You read those four, but it is, they, they are quite lengthy. Read those four, and you will see that what he describes is what is occurring now, it's the end point to humanism, it's the end point to atheism, it's the end point to the uh, liberal left. And the reason why they're called the left is it has nothing to do necessarily with that they, they are, or in terms of political left or right, it has to do with the term from Gnosis called left-hand path. The right-hand path is something that's more spiritual. And you will see this in a lot of the nihilists and so on and so forth. But the left-hand path is openly evil. And one of the things they promote is destruction. Chaos and destruction. Destruction, this is what we're seeing. So what's happened is that uh, the left is openly evil. Well, they had been using the pretense of being humanistic and you know, being uh, philanthropic. The reality behind it was indeed left-hand path. Uh, ironically enough, if you look at you look up the term gnosis, and what you'll find is you'll find um, the left-hand path. You'll find Alistair Crawley. You'll find Baphomet, and you'll find the Entertainer Madonna. They're all on the left-hand path. There, on the right-hand path, you'll find Buddha and you'll find Christ. And so what happens is that you have this sort of Understanding of left, right, in terms not in terms of the political sense, but in terms of the spiritual sense, and a lot of the political sense 
which was basically humanism, emerged from the uh, from the sense of from the uh, sort of the sphere of gnosis of the Gnostic, uh, the knowledge seeker. Gnosis means knowledge. That's the Greek word for knowledge. And, and basically, what you're doing is you're, you're seeking knowledge. And these are people called knowledge seekers. They use a lot of mathematics. They use a lot of science. And you can point this out by doing a study. And this is how this start, how Lionel came into everything because he was I was was and am doing a study comparing the work of Voltaire uh, to the actual scientists like Newton and Leibniz. And Newton and Leibniz were fully involved in uh, the Gnostic sphere. They they were alchemists. And alchemy has a large has a large component of it that is fundamentally Gnostic. This is why you see it, the philosopher's ring in in in, um, in uh, uh, the Hobbit and uh, 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 Lord of the Rings. And the game came forward again until the to the modern era version of the Hobbit and, and, and Lord of the Rings. It's Harry Potter. The philosopher's ring shows up there again to understand that this. Ring was fully, uh, as these philosophers, it's called these natural philosophers, this was alchemy, was fully involved in the Gnostic sphere. And what happens is that your, your leaders always are involved in the Gnostic sphere, but they push things out so they don't, so they're not seen to be like this. They create a public view, sort of, that is uh, what we call humanistic. So the humanistic view was always a work, it was always something fictional. But just it was never let on that this was the case. But if you did enough enough of, enough of your study, you could find out that this was indeed the case, that this was something that was fictional, and uh, you could sort of see how things start falling apart. And Dostoevsky saw this, and he wrote about this. This was in the 1800s, late 1800s. So this is, this, what's going on now is the end point of what Dostoevsky was writing about. And this is why... Um, uh, 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 Lionel's part of the study now. He's part of the study. I didn't necessarily know how to place him. Now I do know how to place him. Uh, he is the response to the end point of Western culture. Western culture is at the end point of uh, Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment, where the character is committing suicide uh, as the ultimate act of control, as the ultimate act of the humanist. Uh, and, and the thing is, is that in there you see, also see, is the step beforehand was destruction and murder for no particular reason, just because you wanted to. It was the ultimate sense of hedonism. And this is what we're seeing emerging today. We're seeing in the at the end of the ultimate hed points of hedonism, we're seeing the destruction of the Western culture. And it's the self-destruction of the Western culture question is, where do we go from here? And the thing is, Biden has just recently pulled out all the troops from uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. So the question is, is this a pullback from war? Or is this simply a pivot to redeploy the troops somewhere else? But that, this stuff, it takes months to figure this, figure this stuff out. This doesn't happen overnight. And so, uh, we will see what ends up happening. Well, I suppose this is a transition point. And it is two hours and 18 minutes into the 16th day of July. Well, 2021. Oh, uh, interesting day. Uh, I just came up from uh, gaming, watching Lionel Media. There was no ride vlog back. Uh, so, uh... uh there it was it was raining so I was able to get a ride back and so there will probably be might be a ride vlog tomorrow I might uh, go get my uh, scooter tomorrow we'll see when it's up happening uh, and then just sort of ride back and sort of bring it back here so I have it here uh, so you might get the uh, the, the ride video uh, the ride vlog split into two segments. But that's neither here nor there because we can have the discussion here as well. The the conversation can go on. Uh, the two things is that one to have comments uh, from from uh, people, and there's one uh, I would like to sort of answer. 
from a, a person named Mephisto. He's based on a uh, comic book series in the Marvel Universe, I guess. Uh, and it's a comic book character based on the demon from Faust, uh, Mephisto. Um, I'm pretty sure he may know this. It's He seems to be a little deep. It's just, uh, but I think is that, and my dad noticed this as well when he put things out. He was perfectly clear, clear in what my dad had put out several, uh, several times, but he kept getting messages back that something was wrong. But the thing is, they hadn't fully read the message yet, but the thing is, rather than reading the message and going to the original, everyone else sort of assumed everyone else knew what was going on, even though it was the wrong thing, and, and the thing is, if you sit back and you watch the videos, you'll understand why Hegel is, it would talk about the Hegelian dialectic. Why is Hegel in the description? Why am I talking about Hegel? Why am I talking about Lionel LeBron? And that's because he's in this universe. He's in the, he's in the society in terms of the, the aspect of it. He's in society to, to a point where he becomes sort of a litmus test to sort of figure out What's going on? Where the sort of the political winds are blowing? And I said before, I've stated this before: that, that things aren't in the, in, the, in, in the world or even in the universe are not set in stone. There's a lot of probability, and anyone from quantum, quantum physics understands this. So you're you're never in control of anything. No one has any control of anything. It's more of like surfing. You have control over what you can do, but pretty much. It's surfing, and so you need these sort of indicators as to how things are sort of shaping up, where the political wind is. It's not that things are going to take any great effect. Right now, I'm making my next move on on QLARP. QLARP is uh, is the the, the 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 nerd game I'm playing, where you're playing sort of a like James Bond type of, type of character, but you're using real intelligence. You're using as, intelligence isn't James Bond. James Bond is not intelligence. That's the way to sort of look at it. Uh, intelligence is basically library science. It's about the information that you have and how you disseminate it to other people. This includes uh, psychological warfare, psychological operations, um, various other aspects to things. Uh, if you want to, and this is this is what our QLAP, what the QLAP is about, it's nonviolent. It's about changing the world, having an effect in the world, uh, using intelligence, using academics, using uh, wisdom, knowledge, and so on and so forth, but not using violence at all. Trying to shift people, sh you're trying to shift the way people think, and using that as a defense against the so-called the evil in the world. And the thing is, there is evil. There is good. There is evil. There is there is bad. But it's not a cut and dry line. There are people who are evil, who have some good in them, who are, who just are it, maybe in a situation they don't necessarily realize that they're doing something that bad or, or that there's a way out. If you can find, you can sort of give somebody who is in a bad situation uh, an option out, not that necessarily it's going to work, but give them an option out that they're willing to try, then you've, you've, you've succeeded. Like right now, I don't know what's happened, is but uh, we're watching uh, Biden uh, pull out of Afghanistan and, and, and Iraq. But the thing is that Trump was doing that to begin with. He was doing the same thing. Uh, and, and the Pentagon fought him tooth and nail. And the thing is, the, this is in some ways a victory, because I've been talking about this, the back to war Biden now for months, uh, since the begin, since the, the uh, first day before he was even inaugurated. I think, oh, this is back to war Biden. Because this is what the signals were. The signals were back to war. This is what everyone was reading about. And so I kept it up, I kept, you know... Uh, and the thing is, is the way the, the way shadow banning works is that they'll not they'll lock you down for two days, but, but the, uh, uh, two weeks, but uh, uh, three weeks in, you're starting to move again. And so I kept my stuff up there. I just I, I slowed my publishing down on Instagram sufficiently so that enough people would get the information about back to war Biden. And I guess it got out to enough people that uh, it it became an issue. And it's no longer back to work by it. He's, he, he's changed, which is a good thing. But the thing at the same time, you have the question now is well, what's next? Because you don't simply pull troops out of particular places. 
it's more about redeployment. So, okay, you're pulling out of Iraq, you're pulling out of Afghanistan. Where are you de redeploying the, the military to? Where are they going next? And that's going to be the real key. The next key is going to be that. And that's sort of what we have to sort of keep our eye on. But that's a change. That's, but that's over three. That was, I don't know, actually six months ago. It was was because uh, we're still within the year of the end a year of the election. Oh. And the thing is, is that this, 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 these things aren't easy, and this is what happens, is that you use Lionel as a as sort of limit test. And this brings in what we call the Hegelian dialectic. And because there is a belief out there. And it, it, you use these terms, like Hegelian dialectic, to identify a concept that is not necessarily specific to, to Hegel. Because Hegel, Hegel was a philosopher. And it's the concept that there is two different points of view. There is a there is a thesis, that's an idea, and there's the antithesis, that's the opposing thing. Even though anti doesn't necessarily mean opposite, it just simply means to take the place of. So anti does not necessarily mean opposite. It is used in this case as opposite, but does not not ne necessarily mean opposite. So this is how the word is used. Anti is the word. Well, actually, it's two words. It's a Greek word from antis to take the place of. And it's used, in this particular sense, in terms of the diction, it is used to mean opposition, to take the place of the opposition. When these two, violently, viol these two concepts, the thesis and antithesis, violently clash, the, the remnants, the thesis, the, the synthesis, the combined two, the best of the combined two, becomes the phoenix that rises from the ashes. Now this whole concept of the phoenix, again, is Gnostic. It goes into Gnostic terminology. But Lionel doesn't do that. He doesn't go into the Gnostic understanding of things. He simply skirts around it. And he tells you he knows, and I know a, a communist here, and I know a Marxist here, and I tell you. But the thing is, is that you, you, you I can show you, there are there are movies out there, older movies. Older movies, I think, are much better because the the, the sense of what's going on is is not properly understood because there is a ser serious disconnect from history. It's a movie called Monsignor Quixote. It's the brother or the long distant co cousin uh, of Don Quixote. He becomes a Catholic uh, bishop, a Monsignor. And it's his travels with a friend, a good friend, who is a Marxist. And he classes himself as a Marxist. But the thing is, is that at the same time, he is arguing that, that Stalin is a, a true Marxist. And the thing is, this is the case, is because Marxism pulls off the Hegelian dialogue. It's, 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 why do you have Marxism the way it is? Is it that, the, 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 that, Socialism is created by Marxism in order to bring about communism. Communism has to come about by a violent clash. This is the Hegelian dialectic. So you can bring these concepts in, but the thing is, a lot of people out there who think they know, don't. And this is this guy, Mephisto. He says, why is Hegel in, in, in the description? But he didn't listen to, he, he didn't hear anything that was said. He didn't go back and do the research. He didn't watch any other videos. Just this one particular video he watched. And Lionel does the same thing. He doesn't go back and... He, he, he accepts somebody else's view who he has respect for. Without questioning, well, how does this person know what they know? Are there other points of view? And that's it. You can't... You don't, don't just rely on one point of view. You have to go find multiple points of view. If you want to study Jewish history, you don't go to a, Kugler, uh, a, a white supremacy group, a white supremacist group. You don't go to their website and say, ha, this is my source. Where do you go? You go to uh, rabbinical conferences. You go... You sit... There's a, there's a lot of rabbinical conferences online. You go through... You sit through... You listen to the conferences... You, you know, one by one, you take your notes, and uh, at the end of your your time in the conferences, you pull your notes, pull your notes together, and this becomes your notebook, and this becomes your understanding, your initial understanding of what's going on in, in inside of uh, Judaica. You understand what's going on, where the history is, 
because they'll tell you what it is. And they'll give you references, things to study, things to read. And that's how you go into what's called the deeper dive research. The deep dive research means you're, you're doing library science. You're doing a lot of library work. But the thing is, the library isn't necessarily in front of you. You have to go out to places. In this case, you, now it's very easy. I was talking to my dad about uh, one uh, 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 saint named, a uh, martyr named St. Saint, Saint Ir Irenaeus, who sat down and really studied, studied um, Gnosticism to, in, in great detail, sort of mapped out what was what and how they operated. Uh, but I, I couldn't really imagine doing this because even with a very large library at the time, he had one of the best libraries around, but that was eventually all destroyed. Um, you're going to sit down, you're going to do a lot of reading, a lot of studying, and, you know, there were a lot of different sources that you had to go, go to. And it was it was amazing how he did what he did way back when, because I know I'm doing none. That's 12, 13, 14 hour days. And you get exhausted. You know, you see, why am I so exhausted? Because the research is at such a level that it knocks you out. And so these, this is the note. These are the notes. The vlogs are the note. That's what a vlog is. A vlog is a video log. And the log can be a journal of anything. What you do in life, what you do this and that. And my, my life tends, has, to, in our life, is a scientist. And this is what we're vlogging. This is our log. It's our notes. It's our journal. But again, this is lost if you don't go and do a, sort of call, a, a, a deeper dive. If you just simply look at the surface and don't pay attention to anything else. That's why you have the question, well, why is Hegel in the description? Well, if you don't go and do the work to, to read through and find out who I am and the stuff is there, then you'll never know, you'll never understand because you simply just didn't go and, and, and look at things. 